and we continue talking cricket. Deandra Dotton's career best 150 on Friday could not beat the rain, but her 19 of 5 balls in today's Super Over ensured she got the Windies woman over the line in their second One Day International in Johannesburg. In a rain-affected match that was reduced to 41 overs, both teams were bowled out for 160, sending the match to a Super Over. Batting first, South Africa made 160 all out in 40.4 overs with Windies tying the match in 37.4 overs. Top scorers for the Windies women, Deandra Dottin, 37, and Shadeen Nation, 35. Each of the Windies bowlers bagged two wickets, then it was time for the super over. West Indies batted first with Dottin and Matthew striding to the crease to face pacer Shabnim Ishmael. Some clean hitting from the pair meant the West Indies produced an intimidating 25 off their super over, leaving the host needing 26 to win. Well, Matthews then bowled the super over for the tourists and restricted the South African pair of Chloe Tyron and Tasman Brits to 17 to secure a nine-run win and a 1-0 series lead. The third ODI will take place on Thursday. Well, here's play of the match. Chanel Henry after today's win. I think it, it, it is pretty good um, for the team because before we left the Caribbean, the, 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 the point of coming here was really to use these four matches as, um, you know, um, practice to go into the World Cup. And I think um, the first game we played, which got abandoned, uh, I think the girls are, well, the team, we're in really good shape. We've been working hard and, you know, um, today we got the win, you know, super over, and it's just about going back um, and just improving on the little things um, today. Well, Lance, you know, it has been an exciting win for the West Indies women. For me, though, I like to say, us West Indies people don't feel satisfied unless we make an easy job very difficult because our Windies women could have gotten to the total without tying the match. But you know what? We as Windies fans, we got a bit of excitement. We got to see Deandra Dotton at her best today. And of course, well, safe by the bell, we won. Yeah, at 83 for 6, uh, the West Indies look to have been in trouble uh, chasing the 161 for victory. But, uh, you know, they had some good knocks from Shady Nation and, and Chanel Henry, who we just heard from, um, to, to bring them within reach of a victory. I guess following the game, I was a little disappointed that they again didn't get the victory clean Same. instead of the tied result and then, and then the super over. But super, super over is always thrilling. And in women's cricket, if you have Deandra Dottin representing you in a super over, it, 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 it makes you an odds-on favorite to win. Well, yeah, and I mean, even our bowlers, I have to say, um, instantly I was very impressed. Every one of the players that bowled today, they picked up two wickets, which was amazing. Haley matches, of course, to pick up the bowlers, which um, resulted in her bowling that super over. So, I mean, some brilliant stuff from our woman. I have to say that I am very impressed by Courtney Walsh and his coaching staff. I've said that numerous times on the Sports Max Zone. Whatever he's doing, I hope he continues because our Windies women are looking more confident. They're looking fitter, which is a problem that we've had with them for some time. So, you know, for me... I'm just happy right now. Yeah, and happy too that Stefani Taylor was able to play today oh, because yeah. she was hit very powerfully by a, a dotting shot in, in the opening ODI, which was, which was rained out. And uh, Stefani back leading the West Indies today. Um, in Stefani Taylor, Haley Matthews, and uh, Deandra Dottin, we have said over and over on this show that these are match winners. On their best day, they can take the West Indies, West Indies to the pinnacle of, uh, of cricket. And, and the fact is, players like Nation and, and Henry and Rashad Williams, and, and there are others now who are showing an inclination to support and not only leave the job of West Indies' success to Matthews, Dottin, and Stefani Taylor, which is a good sign. And um, I'm eager to see what happens in the remaining ODIs. Um, they have two more matches to play. The West Indies have a lead now in the series. And um, they're getting ready for the World Cup, which is going to be very, very tough. There are some very, very strong teams in, in world cricket, Australia, New Zealand, England, and so on. Um, England and Australia just playing an exciting Ashes test match, which went right down to the wire, which was live on, on Sportsmax. And uh, I think the West Indies coaching staff, Cody Walsh and them, they will recognize that the, the women will have to be on point when they go to the World Cup. But I think given what we have seen from this team in recent months, I think we can look forward to the World Cup with some optimism. 
Yeah, because of course the injuries are something that we're always worried about. And we mentioned it on the show when George was here. We spoke about the fact that Deandra Dottin, when she picked up that injury, and it was an injury, not a minor injury, but one that is usually career ending. You know, you get really worried when uh, one of your favorite sportswomen or sportsmen, they pick up injuries, you know. Um, of course, when she... When Deandra Dotton got that injury, we were worried that we wouldn't have seen the best of her. We know she was going to return, but we didn't think that the Deandra Dotton we have been seeing as of recent would have been back. So I'm very happy to see her. You know, it actually takes a bit of the pressure off Stephanie Taylor, who has had to perform, um, you know, game after game when Deandra Dotton was off. Yeah, and the other thing is that we have to look to the future as well, because a lot of the players in this current team have been playing for 10, 15 years and yeah. so on. So we have to inject new players in. There's a solution, Zayda James, who just played for the Windwards on the 19s in a series against the USA on the 19s in uh, St. Vincent and the Grenadines. And uh, she averaged, I think, 50 in the series and also bowls well. Uh, she's still a teenager, Zayda James from St. Lucia, and I think she's a promising player that has already been brought into the West Indies setup for like trials and so on. But I, I would like to think that we have young players in the West Indies who can come in and beef up this current uh, West Indies women's setup and make them a potent force in the coming years. Yeah, even earlier today, looking on at Karishma Bowl, I felt I felt extremely proud to see her because you know for some time she's been, you know, trying to make the team, trying to do her best and what whatever. So, you know, just to see her bowling today and, you know, reaping the reward she had. Um, she was able to pick up two wickets. She yeah. had a maiden over the match before. She was able to pick up some wickets. And she is also very young as compared to the other players. So, you know, you speak about youngsters stepping up. And I hope that, you know, she, as she gets the opportunity, she takes the opportunity and continues to work hard so that, you know, she can become a regular name on the squad. Yeah, and I, th and I think she, she's developing more confidence, your sister. Yeah. Uh, a Karishma Ramharak, and um, it's good to see that because uh, a player like Anissa Mohammed, who bowls off spin like Karishma does, has been playing for the West Indies now since she was 15 years old. Yeah. And um, there was a point two or three years ago that it appeared as if uh, she was stepping away from the setup, and uh, she hadn't been for a, for a period an automatic pick on the West Indies team, and um, um, she has rebounded from that, and now she looks, you know. <laughs> She's back. Yes, yeah, she looks. She looks <laughs> intent on on giving some more solid years to the West Indies team because statistically she has been our best bowler yeah. overall. You right. know, in, in in the history of women of, of women's women's cricket. Um, there's Afi Fletcher as well. She just came back from maternity leave, but yeah, she's yeah. also looking really good. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So I, I think I think the, the future of this West Indies women's team looks pretty solid, and I hope they do well in the World Cup. Yeah, I just want them to take the momentum that they have right now and translate it into the World Cup lands, and I think we'll be, you know, good to go. Because what I love about um, Courtney Walsh's setup is the fact that he's integrating the senior players with newcomers. So, you know, it's not just a team with only senior players, you know, the ones that we're accustomed to. He's bringing in the youths, you know, giving them the opportunity so that worst case scenario, our senior players decide to step down, which I don't want to see anytime soon. There will be players that can step in with ease and continue to lead the team. So, well, Lance, we're going to take a quick break. We're coming right back. We have so much more for you.